What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How's it going? It's Dan here from Grind OR. Uh, welcome to part 21 of my game making journey. So, this is following on, um, obviously, from part 20. Uh, in part 20, we had basically built uh, significant amounts of uh, a game that were intended for release. And um, yeah, the game engine we were using was no longer being supported. So, that kind of put us at a bit of a crossroads as to where we go from there. So, uh, sit down. Uh, have have a cup of tea and it's time to enjoy the uh, the next part of uh, uh, my epic adventure. What with me and Josh now deciding that neither of us wanted to work in Game Maker 2 anymore, that left us with only one of two options. Either we port the game back into Game Maker 1.4 and hope that the defunct engine wouldn't cause us any issues when we came to launch the game, or whenever that may be, or we look for another engine. Being a fan of the Fallout series, I know all too well what can happen when you try to use an out-of-date engine with modern hardware. I I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. I read on the internet that our games have had a few bugs. Hell, it wasn't even that long ago that an update in either Windows, Game Maker, or my graphics card driver meant that some of the games that I'd already made at this point would only launch to a black screen. I mean, the games were definitely running because not only could I hear music, but I could also hear all the sound effects within the game. But for some reason, just a blank screen. This was sorted out eventually, but we couldn't help thinking that as the engine became more and more obsolete, the chances of these issues just ironing themselves out would become more and more remote. At least if we launched the game in a current engine, if there were any issues further down the line, there would at least be a few people way smarter than we were trying to fix it somewhere. So, a new engine it is then. That then replaced the should we stay or should we go question with an even bigger question. Go where? There is a myriad of game engines out there to choose from, all with their individual strengths and weaknesses. Now, for every game engine out there, there is at least a thousand advocates online that will tell you that their engine of choice is the one to pick. Not only that, but there's a video on YouTube to back up their opinion. We banded around a few different options including Unreal and Godot, and yes I pronounce it Godot, not Godot, because A has a robot in the logo, and B I am neither French nor a pretentious hipster neckbeard. After, well, not very long at all really, Josh said, well they do say that Unity is the engine for people that graduate from Game Maker, and with that away we went. We both downloaded the engine, hopped onto the YouTube and searched for tutorials on how to make a 2D platformer. I went with Let's Make a Game Together series and got to work. Step one was to get a player character in, which can only be described as a potato and a hat, and then to get some basic movement in. I was immediately struck by just how similar C Sharp was to GML. It was really weird. I bet if you know your way around GML, you can take one look at this code and immediately know what it does and how it works. The thing I liked the most was that you can create public variables within the code and then the engine adds them as a module to the player's hierarchy. I mean, that seemed really cool to me. Coming from GameMaker, where code is always stored away in separate windows, and having superficially used Unreal and Blender, both of which look very similar to Unity, and have mountains and mountains of pre-built parameters you can play around with, this felt like I was actually modifying the engine, even though that's not really the case. With a bit of playing around and a few mistakes on the way, the potato would now flip and face the direction it was travelling in. The next most important component for a platformer is jumping. A few more lines of code and that was in. Might be a little overpowered, but a few more tweaks and that was kind of sorted out, even if the player could jump endlessly. Time to add a bit of camera movement and another staple of all platformers, um, platforms to jump on. Within another video, we had a death script, a jump to make, and a hole to fall down. Now, what would a platform be without enemies on patrol? So, with a bit of prototyping, we got that working, and with a bit of collision, we were one step closer. I gotta say, I had altogether too much fun messing around, knocking this little block around. I'm not entirely sure what that says about me. And that was about as far as I got with this tutorial. I did really enjoy working with UD, but throughout the whole process, I kind of felt like I was wasting time. My long term goal for Cry Noir has always been to build up a fully fledged AAA studio, making big blockbuster titles without scalping gamers for every last dollar in their wallet. Working on 2D pixel art games was only ever supposed to be a start up. Because of this, 
I always treat Game Maker as a temporary stopgap. I only ever learned what I needed to learn to accomplish the next step, knowing that in the not too distant future, I would be abandoning GML altogether and moving over to C++ to work in Unreal. Doing this tutorial in Unity, I felt like I was learning yet another language that I intended on abandoning to rebuild a game that I wasn't really that invested in. I kept asking myself, does the world really need another 2D platformer? I recently found Matthew Palacio's channel, who's an indie developer that works with Unreal, and his channel was full of beginner tutorials and tutorials making variety mechanics from player movement to enemy pathfinding. I mean, why was I wasting my time? I then sent a very difficult message to Josh. I explained that I no longer really wanted to work on the project, and that I wanted to go over to Unreal, and that I wanted to work exclusively in 3D. He'd always been aware of what my long-term goal was, and after the last couple of months, I don't think this came as a huge surprise to him, as Josh had never expressed any desire to do either 3D modelling or work in Unreal. I felt it was time for both of us to go our separate ways. I am really going to miss working with Josh, but continuing to work on a game I had no desire to make? Well, that's just what AAA devs do. Okay, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. It was quite a short one. Uh, I think this will probably be the shortest one of my game making journeys, but uh, nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed it. There are lots and lots of other of these game making journeys. So obviously, this is part 21, so that would imply a certain number of pre existing ones. Um, then there's also devlogs for uh, the game that I'm uh, initially referencing, and all sorts of other cool videos on the channel. So check them out uh, if you like the sound of my voice. Uh, and in some of them, you will see my face. So if you did like it, please hit the subscribe and the like and the comments and all of that good stuff. It really helps us out. Um, and when I say us, I mean me and other me. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Take it easy. I'll see you very soon. Cheerio now. Bye bye. <laughs>